it's time for another card review. This time, we've got a number of cards that change how games will play out in completely new ways. There's support for Big Warlock, new Spellburst cards, and an awesome addition for Totem Shaman. Let's get started. Huh, this should be interesting. In our first couple reviews, we explained how our review criteria differ from others. There's a card above linking to review two if you need to hear an explanation on how we analyze each card. There's a time code for quick reviews with puns in the description below for those of you without much time. For everyone else, let's get into the main reviews. We're starting today's review with a card that has the potential to completely change how players build our decks. Lorekeeper Polkelt is a neutral 4-5 legendary for 4 mana with a battle cry that reorders the rest of your deck from the highest cost card to the lowest cost card. If you really need your most expensive combo card to close out the game, this battle cry will ensure it's the next card you draw. If you're running a hyper aggressive deck and almost all the rest of your deck is one and two drops, but you need that hand of Gul'dan or Metamorphosis to get the last bit of pressure together to close out the game, this can set that up. As discounts to cards like the eight mana, eight eight mana giant appear after you draw them, this can help you put Mana Giant at the top of your deck, but it'll actually change to just 2 or 3 mana when it enters your hand if you've discounted it enough. Meaning you could play it and Conjurer's Calling right away. Lorekeeper Polkelt will totally change the way a lot of decks are built. Of course, to use Polkelt, you have to draw him. So having your game plan be completely reliant on a 1 of in your deck isn't a good idea. But there is so much room for experimentation with this card, it's crazy. Something else Blizzard confirmed about this card already is that if something gets shuffled into your deck, like a bomb from Bomb Warrior, it will completely reshuffle your entire deck, meaning Polkelt's battle cry gets negated and the order will be random again. That also means any primes you shuffle into your deck will mess up the descending mana order of your draws as well, so keep that in mind. So Lorekeeper Polkelt is really a build around card, but there are already at least two meta decks that would use him if they could. First, Quest Warlock would use him to ensure Malagos or one of their other nine mana dragons is guaranteed to be discounted to zero mana by their quest completed hero power. The second certain inclusion would be Dragon and Spell Druid as the portals from Ysera Unleashed are all 9 mana, meaning that after you play Ysera Unleashed, they could play this to guarantee all the portals will be drawn in a row. If you anticipate that combo coming down, definitely save a board clear. Anyways, Polkelt would be meta now. And there are so many possibilities with a card like this, I would not be surprised if there are 6 or 7 new meta decks that end up including him. Lorekeeper Polkelt will definitely be a meta later card. So will there be crazy or experimental things we can do with Polkelt? Yes. So many possibilities are already flooding my mind. And we could probably spend half the expansion just figuring out more broken ways to use him. So yes, there is no question that Lorekeeper Polkelt will enable a ridiculous number of meme decks. That was a long one. So remember how I mentioned shuffling things into your deck would mess up Lorekeeper Polkelt's order? Well, warriors won't be the only ones able to shuffle cards into your deck. A heads up real quick, there's a fair bit of salt coming with the next four cards, so I apologize in advance. The first card for today's review from Demon Hunters is Glide, a four mana spell to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards. If it's played from an outcast position, your opponent does the same. So if Demon Hunters know they're facing a combo deck or deck planning to use Lorekeeper Polkelt, they can wait to use this card from an outcast position to ensure that the opponent's nine cards get shuffled back into their deck and they only get four cards back in hand. Cycle of Hatred didn't seem like enough to pile on the hatred towards Demon Hunters, but this card? Why, Blizzard? Just why? This is also a really great tool in a really aggressive deck. Demon Hunters, never aggressive, right? 
So if they play out all their cards and then play this, it's a four mana draw four cards. Divine Favor for Paladins was rotated to the Hall of Fame because it felt too bad to play against aggressive Paladins with it. This card takes the bad feelings up a notch by messing with the opponent's cards as well. With this and the next few cards, I'm going to go ahead and say that I can already see a few more nerfs to Demon Hunter in the next set as well if Blizzard doesn't want to alienate half their player base. In the current meta, Tempo Demon Hunter runs pretty smoothly without this, and it's not too often that they run completely out of cards without a Skull of Gul'dan in their hands. Some versions might tech in a copy in place of an eye beam as a disruption and redraw their cards, but I don't think they really need it. Token Demon Hunter is looking to get value out of Nethrandomus, which would get reset after shuffling in their deck, so it's questionable whether they would run it either. It's good enough that both decks might seriously look at including it more as a disruption to their opponent than the benefit for their own game plan. But it feels a little bit awkward, so I'm going to go ahead and say it doesn't quite fit the current builds. However, when decks are built with this in mind, you can bet that the most aggressive class in the game will leap on this cheap card draw and opponent disruption card as a way to wreck the upcoming meta. I'm already hoping for a nerf to this. One meme deck we made with Demon Hunter that could really benefit from this is our deck that used the absurd amount of card draw available to Demon Hunters to cycle through the deck and draw to the end so that we could drop a Chef Nomi as soon as possible. This card might allow us to lower the curve of card draw cards used in the deck and cycle through a turn or two faster than the original version, while also reducing the number of cards our opponent has meaning there's a slightly better chance of them not having a board clear to destroy our Nomi board. As ridiculously good card draw, this should enable some peculiar decks to see play on the ladder. So if the idea of Demon Hunters forcing you to shuffle all your cards back into your deck to draw just four random ones back isn't tilting enough, check out this next card. Star Student Stalina is a four mana legendary, four three minion, with an outcast effect to look at three cards in their opponent's hand and shuffle one of them back into their deck. So you finally manage to get all the cards together to pull off your combo, and then the Demon Hunter plays this to completely wreck your dreams. Hopefully, you just top deck the card they just shuffled in, but otherwise, there will be rage. This is a great counter to combo decks, or a great stall against extremely powerful cards like Galakrond, Plague of Death, Alex Straza, yada yada. Fortunately for any opponents, this card is only good when played from the outcast position, so about 1% of the time, Demon Hunters won't be able to wreck you. Aren't we glad that Blizzard made sure the new class is so strong? Don't worry, there's more coming in a minute. In both of the current meta decks, this is a bit awkward to include. She can disrupt a quest warlock by shuffling their Malagos back into their deck, if that's one of the cards she gets from their pretty full hand. But if the game has gone on that long, a Tempo Demon Hunter has probably already lost. Shuffling an exotic Mount Cellar against Druid, Bran against Highlander Hunter, or Galakrond against Rogue would really mess up their plans. But very often, each deck has quite a few other cards in hand when they're getting ready to play one of those, so the reliability of hitting the exact card Demon Hunter is looking for, if they've even drawn it yet, isn't necessarily worth the sacrifice of tempo to run this card. It's a little unlikely they would run this card as they're built now. Just like with Glide, this is a tough call, but I don't think it would make the cut. We haven't seen a card that lets you shuffle one of your opponent's cards back into their deck until now. The closest type of disruption to this we've seen until now is Dirty Rat, which yanks a random minion of your opponent's onto the board. This doesn't make them lose the card altogether, but it does reduce the number of cards they have in hand and gives the possibility of delaying a really good turn. So just like decks that use Dirty Rat are built to handle the extra minion summoned on the board and the timing has to be figured out, I'm pretty certain Star Student Stalina will find a home in a solid meta deck able to use her efficiently a couple of weeks into the new expansion. 
The most creative thing we can do with Star Student Stellina, if we don't mind receiving menacing threats after games, would be to use youthful and ancient brewmasters to bounce her back into hand and keep tossing our opponent's cards back into their deck. However, that would only work four extra times and would be a real challenge to get into the outcast position each time. The only reward is ticking off our opponent, probably only to die in the end anyways. So unless we figure out another synergy or way to exploit her abilities, we're going to drop the hammer and say that Stelina is not a meme deck worthy card. Now if you do manage to stick an impressive minion to the board, even after Demon Hunter shuffles your best cards back into your deck, hopefully that minion doesn't have something nice to be silenced. If it does, watch out for Mage Hunter. She's a 3 mana 2-3 minion with Rush and whenever she attacks a minion, that minion gets silenced. Even if Mage Hunter dies in the attack, this neutralizes Taunts, Poisonous, and Death Rattles. Not to mention, Divine Shield doesn't mean anything to her. She has slightly reduced stats, but her effect is potent. With Consume Magic and this, Demon Hunters join Priest as a multi-silence option class. Fun fun. Consume Magic is a pretty efficient silence and card draw card that doesn't see play in Tempo Demon Hunter or Token Demon Hunter, and most things Mage Hunter would want to silence will end up killing her. So if Consume Magic isn't run, it's doubtful that Mage Hunter could join the current meta decks. And once the set comes out, I'm not sure that Demon Hunters will need Mage Hunter. They already have a way to bypass taunts and melt boards, and the next card we'll look at is an almost certain inclusion in their new decks, so I don't know that she'll make the cut. If a modified form of Control Demon Hunter climbs into the new meta, there's a chance that Mage Hunter will find a home in that deck, but I think they're just going to be doing more absurdly powerful things in the new meta. Mage Hunter is an amazing card but she may not be broken enough to get into Demon Hunter decks because all the other cards are beyond amazing. Other than her innate ability to neutralize powerful buffs and effects on minions right away, there's not too much to work with for a meme deck. We could probably keep her alive for an extra turn with the next card, or copy her with Faceless Manipulator to silence everything from our opponent, but there's not really anything exciting to build with her. Mage Hunter doesn't get to join memes either. So we've seen some pretty broken powerful cards for Demon Hunter during this review. Surely the next card can't be that absurd, right? <laughs> well, Demon Hunters get to share this next legendary with regular Hunters. Let's look at Ace Hunter Crean. He's a 3 mana 2-4 Hunter and Demon Hunter legendary that gives all your other characters immune while attacking. Kane was an experiment in ignoring taunt, and Crean is an experiment in ignoring damage. What could possibly go wrong? This will be another must kill minion, or else Demon Hunter will melt your board with Warglaves while taking no damage, or their minions will actually decide to trade with yours instead of going face because they won't die. Regular Hunters also have quite a few Rush minions that will be quite happy to fight alongside Ace Hunter Crean, and this makes any weapon they're wielding feel like Candleshot of old, but with potential for more attack. Token Demon Hunter actually benefits from their minions dying, so they might not want to run Crean, but Tempo Demon Hunter would be ecstatic to have him win them the game. Highlander Hunter doesn't tend to go too wide, but for an opportunity to win the board without taking face damage or losing a minion on board, I'm pretty sure they'd find a way to include him. Dragon and Quest Hunter would snatch this guy up in a heartbeat. There's no way Ace Hunter Queen gets passed over in the new meta either. And when immunity is an option, there's got to be ways we can build some broken decks. My first question? If we copy Queen, will they both have immune while attacking since there's another Queen? The immunity only works while they're attacking, so the opponent can just kill them on their turn. But still, I want to know. I'm also eager to use Ace Hunter Queen with our quest buffed Young Dragonhawk Tundra Rhino deck. It'd be funny to drop a couple Young Dragonhawks and have them smack through taunts without dying. If the leaked 1 mana Flying Broom card 
that gives other minions rush really does join the game, we're going to do a lot of stupid and fun combos with this. The final card Demon Hunters got for today's review is shared with Warlocks. It's Philosophy, a one mana dual class spell to copy the lowest cost demon in your hand. If it's played from an outcast position, both copies of the demon get plus one plus one. This is a really cool card to build around if you've got just a few powerful demons in your deck, but it also works pretty well in an aggressive build as well. Demon Hunters will have to be lucky to get this in an outcast position to duplicate their Battle Fiend right away, so that shouldn't happen every game. But even an extra buffed Satyr Overseer will be a force to be reckoned with early in the game. Big demon builds of both Demon Hunter and Warlock will also be able to use this very effectively as a way to lock down the board in their favor. The only demons in Tempo Demon Hunter are Battle Fiend and Satyr Overseer, and while getting an extra one of these to drop early on would be powerful, they're more impactful played on curb. Trying to get value from philosophy before dropping them seems contrary to Tempo's game plan but Token Demon Hunter might be willing to make a tempo sacrifice for more guaranteed tokens, especially since there's a chance for a stat buff. Galakrond Warlock summons demons, but they don't run them, and Quest Warlock wouldn't want to sacrifice a card slot for an extra Moarg Artificer or Aranesi Broodmother already in hand. But Zoo Warlock might be willing to take the hit for the buff as it's one more option to get buffed by Imprisoned Scrap Imp and Fiendish Servant could really ramp the board pressure. They're also likely to be able to get this into an outcast position easily, as their first few turns can be dropping a few of their cheapest minions, and then they play this, which generates an extra minion, on par with tapping for a new minion, but one mana less. So yeah, this would be meta now. And the next card we'll look at gives me some hope for a big demon warlock that uses this, which will allow us to create extra enhanced dreadlords and other hefty threats. Altered versions of Zoo Warlock will certainly use this, and it's feasible that a big demon demon hunter strong enough to use this in the meta develops. We should see this in at least one of the decks in the new meta. And you know we're going to revisit our soul split Priestess of Fury meme deck with this. We'll also build a deck with enhanced dreadlords as the only initial demons and use philosophy to get extra copies of enhanced dreadlords and canrathod so that we can brewmaster bounce him back to hand and keep flooding the board with sizable taunt and lifesteal demons. This is going to be fun. We mentioned big demon warlock while talking about philosophy. Warlock's got another tool to help with this archetype. Arc Witch Willow is a legendary 7-7 minion for 9 mana with a battle cry to summon a random demon from your hand and deck. A 9 mana 7-7 is way understated, but if she's accompanied by an enhanced dreadlord and Aranasi Broodmother, we can't complain. She's not a card to use with small demons, and she's not coming down into the late game most of the time but Warlock has lots of tools to survive and discount cards, so Arc Witch Willow should be able to root herself into the latter. Galakrond, Quest, and Zoo Warlock would all look at Arc Witch Willow with a quizzical stare. She's definitely not a current meta deck card, but can Control Handlock finally make its way back into the new meta? With Philosophy, there's a bit of hope, but without at least one more support card for the archetype, I don't think it quite gets there. Fortunately, we still haven't seen all the cards, so there is a chance the last puzzle piece necessary to make it work gets announced soon. With what we've seen thus far, I can't say that this will be a meta later card, but I'm really hoping it gets there. And yes, we will definitely build a few experimental decks with Arc Witch Willow, if only to see Lord Jaraxxus resummoned onto the board. She'll also be a key component of our Enhanced Dreadlord wall deck, as long as we're careful to play her before shuffling our Canrathod Prime into our deck. Let's meme. This next card is not a demon, but it's big. Flesh Giant is an 8 mana 8 8 minion for Warlocks and Priests. Like other giant cards, its cost is reduced by 1 for a specific effect. This time, it's based on the number of times your hero's health changed during your turns. 
So Priest may be able to discount this a bit over the course of the game if their hero takes damage, which Soulbound Ashtung can help with, but Warlocks will have a much easier time to discount this quickly and efficiently. Perhaps Pain Warlock finally takes a spot in the meta with this? Probably not. But with the right draws for Warlock, Flesh Giant may be making appearances in some games as early as turn 4. As this doesn't have taunt, it wouldn't be worth running in Res Priest due to the unreliable discounts, and while Cube Priest could get a lot of value out of it if they could drop a Grave Rune on it, other decks would get wise to their game plan right away, so Flesh Giant wouldn't get to come down very early, almost ever. Quest Warlock wouldn't throw this in, but Galakrond Warlock might consider tossing it in. Zulok, however, would almost certainly run this. There's a little bit of anti-synergy with the Hand of Gul'dan and Expired Merchant if Flesh Giant hasn't been discounted enough to drop below 6 mana. But with Flame Imp, Tapping, and Neferset Thrasher, it's extremely likely Zoo players will be able to ensure Flesh Giant is cheap enough to avoid conflicting before they need to draw with the Hand of Gul'dan. The upside of drawing an 8-8 early on should be enough to outweigh any awkward interactions with Hand of Gul'dan. And while Priest will likely continue facing a challenge to use Flesh Giant efficiently, I'm sure a few Warlock decks will figure out a way to use him. The question is, with Warlock struggling in Tier 3 at the moment, will any decks using him be able to compete in the new meta? That's something I'm not so sure about. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a meta later card because cost reduced cards have a history of making a big impact and propping up medium quality archetypes, but this one's a bit questionable. In Priest, we'll make a Soulbound Ashtung Apotheosis Quest Priest that will find ways to get this discounted so we can drop Grave Runes and Psyche Split on it and flood the board with 8-8s. We'll also revisit Pain Warlock to see if we can make it work. It's also interesting in a Fell Lord Betrug plot twist deck as another 8-8 to drop right alongside its rushing copy for zero mana. It should be interesting. You know what Thief Priest really needs? Another way to steal opponent's minions. Well, Cabal Acolyte is here to fill that... void? It's a 4 mana 2-6 taunt minion with a spell burst effect to gain control of a random enemy minion with 2 or less attack. This is an effect somewhat similar to Cabal Shadow Priest, but this isn't targeted and requires casting a spell to pull off. The upside is that it has taunt, but that's also a downside as the enemy will want to remove it anyways if the spell burst hasn't been triggered, and this can't hide behind other taunts. This does have amazing synergy with Lazul's scheme, but if the enemy has a few lackeys on board and you don't use an infinite breath or holy nova to trigger this, there's a chance Cabal Acolyte steals one of the lackeys. It's a tilting card to see and think about priests stealing minions, but the drawbacks may be sufficient to keep it from becoming a popular card. With the density of lackeys in the current meta, and the requirement to run Lazul's scheme to make this steal any amazing minions, I don't think this would make the cut in current Priest decks. It has potential to mess up the res pool for res priest, Galakron Priest prefers to get copies of your great cards to play themselves with Thought Steal without having to dedicate two card slots to the combo, and Cube Priest is satisfied when Mind Flayer Karj gets a guaranteed good minion without relying something as situational as Cabal Acolyte. In the new meta, it's possible that a hybrid between Galakron Priest and Cube Priest figures out a little more efficient way to use this effectively, and begins running this and Cabal Shadow Priest to help steal even more minions from their opponent, but even with Lazul's scheme, it feels a bit awkward. Perhaps my bias against Thief Priest is clouding my judgement, but I don't think a version using Cabal Acolyte will be able to survive the new meta. However. A Thief Priest going all in on a steal all of the minions from your opponent could throw this in with Lazul's Scheme and Scarlet Subjugator and drop their Grave Runes on it to really try and steal as many minions from their opponent as possible. It would be a really frustrating deck to play and play against, but with Soul Mirror, Psyche Split on their minions, and even Mind Control, it's possible to steal a lot of their minions from a slower deck. It's not a meme I'm eager to try out, 
but Cabal Acolyte is a meme deck enabler. This next card is one you may not get too upset at Priest for Stealing. Pinflinger is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one neutral minion with a battle cry to deal 1 damage. His spell burst effect is to return himself to your hand. This is pretty interesting in a deck running a bunch of small spells such as Mana Cyclone Mage or Spell Damage Hunter. Both decks would be able to bounce him a few times to get in a bit more chip damage. Mage could use Sorcerer's Apprentice to discount the spells, but you're still paying at least one mana for each point of damage. So it's not broken powerful. Since Spell Burst triggers after the spell is played, rogues won't be able to just shadow step this guy for a tiny burst of damage. Perhaps he finds a home in a Rampage Warrior deck? We'll see. Since this is a pretty weak one drop without getting any benefit from the Spell Burst effect to go off, for this to see play, it would need to go into a deck with a fair number of cheap spells to realize any benefit. Small Spell Mage is at the bottom of tier 4, so it's out of bounds of the current meta, and while Spell Druid does run quite a few low cost spells, they wouldn't bother slotting this in. So Penflinger isn't a meta now card. When discussing this on stream, one of our viewers mentioned that Knife Juggler might work well with Penflinger, and indeed, that improves the impact Penflinger has, but most decks looking to utilize Knife Juggler focus on generating minions or tokens over running cheap spells. Perhaps a modified Galakrond Warlock or Token Druid could find a decent balance where Penflinger would be worth including, but I doubt that would be strong enough to reach the top three tiers of the new meta. But we'll certainly make a small spell mage with Sorcerer's Apprentices, Knife Jugglers, and Mirror Images, among other things, to bewilder our opponents. Beware the Pen Juggling Token Cyclone Mage meme deck. Another spell burst card we get to review this time is Ceremonial Maul. This warrior and paladin dual class weapon is a 2 2 for 3 mana with a spell burst effect to summon a student with taunt and stats equal to the spell's cost. With a big enough spell, this honor student could provide a decent roadblock for your opponent. It's an understated weapon, so you really want the spell burst effect before swinging a second time with it, but that may seriously hinder how effective this can be, as you may not have a spell or want to cast a spell to trigger this before you need to strike with it a second time. The weapons in Murloc and Pure Paladin, as well as the ones in Egg, Bomb, and Pirate Warrior all have better synergy with what their deck is trying to do than this, so I can't see any of them sacrificing another card to fit this in. If a buff or control paladin, or a big minion or control warrior fight their way into the new meta, this might be able to join one of those decks, as they have a number of medium and high cost spells that would make the spell burst from this feel better. However, the lack of immediate impact on an early turn when playing this in a new meta likely to run a fair bit of weapon removal makes it feel much weaker than the other options for Paladin and Warrior. I don't think it's going to make the cut in any new meta decks either. But we will try this in a Dimensional Ripper deck which will already run Brawl as an alternate activator for this. We'll also try throwing it into our Hack the System Quest Warrior deck for fun to see if the taunt buys us a bit more time. We'll also look at tossing this into a Highlander Pure Paladin deck with Librem of Hope and Pharaoh's Blessing as activators. Perhaps we'll even try reviving a King Feoris deck with this? There are a number of things to try out with a weapon like this. While Ceremonial Maul may not see too much play for Warriors, this next card certainly should. Warriors also get Playmaker, a 3 mana 4-3 minion with an effect that after you play a rush minion with her on board, she'll summon a copy with 1 health remaining. A second Restless Mummy, Kargath Bladefist, or Bloodboil Brute at the cost of waiting to play them together with her is amazing. Even if you do toss her out on curve to risk her dying before getting the extra value, she's an aggressive minion for 3 mana, which is sure to draw the opponent's attention. While Pirate Warrior doesn't run any rush minions, both Bomb Warrior and Egg Warrior run Blood Boil Brute. Some versions of Bomb Warrior have taken to running Kargath Bladefist as well. Although pairing this with so few rush minions is a bit questionable, 
I think the impact of a second Blood Boil Brute or Kargath would make it worth including Playmaker in current versions. I'm pretty sure she would see play if she could see play. And when decks can be built with her in mind, Playmaker should definitely make the cut. She turns Restless Mummy into a 12 damage removal minion, and Evasive Worm becomes twice as terrifying to deal with. One meme direction we took with our Dimensional Ripper deck was to try summoning a ridiculous number of Kargath Primes so that we could armor out of range of our opponents ever killing us. While Playmaker isn't something we'd want from Dimensional Ripper, it looks like we'll have a chance to play a different version of Super Kargath Warrior in the upcoming meta. Look forward to Rushing Blades. Speaking of Rush minions we'd love to have extra copies of, check out Dr. Krastinov. He's a 5 mana rogue and warrior dual class legendary minion with rush and an effect which reads, whenever this attacks, give your weapon plus one plus one. He's arguably better than Captain Greenskin in initial impact, since although he trades in attack damage, he gets to rush in right away. And if he miraculously survives, you could get a second buff with him. The main comparative drawback is if there's not anything to rush Krastinov into, you won't get the buff right away. He's also missing the pirate tag for synergies in that direction. Although Pirate Warrior wouldn't be able to pull Dr. Krastinov out of their deck with Ankar, I'm fairly certain they would run him, probably right alongside Captain Greenskin. Bomb Warrior would also seriously look at including him to get one more bomb while controlling the board. Warriors would definitely use him, but none of the current rogue decks would find a home for this doctor. Alongside Steel Dancer, it feels like there's going to be a decent amount of weapon synergy in the upcoming meta as well. So Bomb Warriors messing with Lorekeeper Polkelt decks shouldn't be the only ones running Dr. Krastinov in the upcoming meta. And memes? We've got a great one to try out with Dr. Krastinov. We'll play him in a quest rogue and use Togwaggle Scheme to shuffle a bunch of copies of him into our deck. With the immune weapon from the quest reward, we'll just keep dropping Dr. Krastinov's turn after turn until we destroy our opponent's entire board and smack our opponent in the face with a 10 attack or more immune weapon. There are quite a few ways we'll be experimenting with this doctor, but this is the most exciting at the moment. Another legendary minion that can stack up some amazing value over time is Mozaki, Master Duelist. She's a 5 mana 3 8 that gains spell damage plus 1 after every time you cast a spell. So remember that small spell mage we were talking about when discussing Penflinger? Mozaki can make those small spells feel a lot bigger if she survives long enough to see enough of them. Now, she doesn't actually start with any spell damage, so her impact won't really be felt until the second spell cast with her in play. But at 8 health, there's a decent chance she can stick around for a turn to make her presence felt. She certainly wouldn't join no minion mage, but both Highlander and Highlander Dragon Mage have a number of small spells as well as spells that would reap quite a reward from having a bit of additional spell damage. She might just make the cut in these decks as a popular card, but I think the benefit of just one or two additional spell damage could make a big impact and demand some serious removal from the opponent. In the new meta, I wouldn't be surprised if a small spell mage with this and a few other tools from the set climb their way into the top tiers. And as part of a burn mage, Mozaki has a lot of potential. She should find a home in a deck or two in the new meta. Not only would a Raid the Sky Temple cheap spell meme deck love to use Mozaki's skills, but we may even be successful in sticking a second copy of her on the board with Faceless Manipulator, so that we can drop a few Sorcerer's Apprentices the following turn and blast our opponent to death with a ridiculous number of small spells, reloading with Mana Cyclone or Evocation partway through. I'm not sure how well it'll work out, but with an effect that can scale like this, we have to run some experiments. Our last card for today is an awesome one. Totem Shaman has been doing quite well on ladder recently, and it looks like Blizzard wanted to give the archetype a real push forward. Totem Goliath is a 5 mana 4-5 totem that overloads for 2. 
but it has a death rattle to summon all four basic totems. As this is a totem, Totemic Reflection will be crazy with this. This is a somewhat expensive minion for Totem Shaman as it's built right now, but the improved chances of developing a wide board for a Bloodlust finish would make it worth including this Goliath. It would be meta now. With this much value bundled into a single card alongside the Totem Synergies already making a big impact in the current meta, Totem Goliath will stomp into the future meta as well. It's possible we'll see an aggro Totem Shaman similar to what we have now, and we might even see a bigger Overload Totem Shaman synergy deck with this as well. In Wild, I certainly want to pair Totem Goliath with Windshear Stormcaller and watch the Alakirs fly across the board. In Standard, the most absurd things we can do with Totem synergies may actually become meta, meaning it may not be meme deck worthy. However, even if that's the case, we could use the fact that this summons four totems to build a knife juggler token evolve meme deck that should be pretty interesting. There's a lot of potential packed into this totem. And now for the quick reviews. Lorekeeper Polkelt is best friends with Malagos and Ysera Unleashed in current meta decks. He will be written about in lore from the upcoming meta and we'll work through the hundreds of meme possibilities with him in reverse order. Glide doesn't quite have the lift it needs to succeed in the current meta, but it should pick up speed in the future meta, and Chef Nomi is excited to see this soar into meme decks. Star student Stelina needs more focused classmates to thrive in the current meta. She likely will find her deck to shine once the meta settles, but the brewmasters figure it's pointless to force memes with her. The amazing mage hunter wants to consume magic, but she's not absurdly amazing enough to join current or future meta demon hunter decks, and she appears to have silenced any meme decks that would consider including her. Ace Hunter Queen is an ace that nearly every deck in the current and future metas wants, and he will help us hunt for dozens of silly and powerful meme decks. Philosophy surprisingly avoids the fate of an outcast in the current and future metas, and opponents will see their shadows reflected on our meme wall of demons with this. Arc Witch Willow would be a weeping willow in the current meta, and she needs one more big demon that we're really hoping to see for her to take root in the new meta, but she will summon some amazing memes for us very soon. Flesh Giant would overcome Gul'dan's Hanging Hand to join current Zoo Warlock decks, and cost reduction cards have had a giant enough impact in the past that I'm trusting this guy to join the new meta as well. Priests and Warlocks have a few ways to flesh out memes with this guy. After stealing a few too many random lackeys, current and future meta decks will close the door on Cabal Acolyte but true Thief Priest memers will make him a full-fledged member of their decks. Pinflinger can't fling pins hard enough to pierce the current or future metas, but meme deck players are looking forward to a pin-juggling token cyclone mage deck with him. Ceremonial Maul wouldn't summon any honor students in the current or future meta, but is likely to figure out a way to rip dimensions apart or encourage King Feoris meme decks to return. Playmaker might make some questionable plays in the current meta, but she's got an impressive playbook for the upcoming meta, and there may almost be too many Kargath meme options once we can play with her. Dr. Krastinov would fight alongside pirates in the current meta, will rush into a few decks in the new meta, and he's scheming with Togwaggle to make the Quest Rogue reward weapon a massive meme. Mozaki, Master Duelist, might be able to duel her way into a Highlander Mage in the current meta, a new meta deck will certainly bet on her, and there are a number of masterful memes she'll enable for us. Totem Goliath will stomp its way into current and future meta decks, and while Windshear Stormcaller is waving from wild, there will still be meme options for this in standard as well. And that's a wrap. We'll continue analyzing cards from Skolomance Academy in future reviews, so drop a like if you enjoyed, and smash that subscribe button so you'll know when the next video comes out. You're awesome. Thank you for watching, and have an awesome day.
to the old school, oh, man, the magic school magic of school. school.